Okay, welcome back. Can you believe it? We're on our fifth video about probability. Now, up to now, we've been looking at situations where things are always equally likely, and we're going to step out of that box. We're going to do that with a spinner. You know how these things work. You spin the arrow around, and it'll land on a 1, 2, or 3. There's a chance of 1 half, 50%, to get 1 point. Turns out there's, in this diagram, there's a 3 eighths chance to get a 2, and 1 eighth of that pi, 1 eighth of the spinner, to get a 3. Let's look at the total of these probabilities, by the way. Remember, they're all supposed to add to 1, do they? We got 1 half, then 3 eighths, and 1 eighth. Well, 3 eighths plus 1 eighth is 4 eighths. That's a half plus the original half. Sure enough, that adds up to 1. So good, it's like the prob way probability is supposed to be. Now we want to analyze this spinner a little bit, uh, but we're going to think about this particular game, and the game is going to be spin twice and add. So first of all, what are the possible outcomes? Well, you should think the smallest possible outcome is if you get two ones, that's two. The largest possible outcome is if you get two threes, that's six. So maybe it's two, three, four, five, and six. Is it possible to make a three? Yeah, one and two. Is it possible to make a four? Sure. What about a five? Yeah, that's possible too, three plus two. So two, three, four, five, and six are our possible outcomes. And we have this particular probability question. What is the probability that the sum is equal to 4? Hmm. Well, we're going to analyze it using an area model. So here we go. We're in the spinner. Once again, we're going to take the first spin first, just like we did with the uh, first and second children. We're going to look at all possibilities. And all possibilities looks like this. Half of the box is a 1, then 3 eighths is a 2, and 1 eighth is a 3. So now we're going to bring in the second spin. We're not going to do the fly-in animation. We're going to do a dissolve. Here we go. Oh, there we are. And what does this all mean? The first spin is the rows, the columns. One is the right-hand half of the diagram. That means you got a one on the second spin. There's a one-half chance of that. The next, the sort of middle column, is getting a two on the second spin. That's three-eighths. The left-hand skinny one is getting a three on the second spin. That's a probability of one-eighth. You can look ahead and already see, oh man, that little box in the upper left, that's getting a six. That's not very likely. So we can add up the sums and see what they all are. And remember that our question is going to be, what's the probability of getting a sum of four? And that's the kind of olive-colored things. So let's focus on the fours. We'll get, oh, there we have some fly animation. We'll get rid of those. And those are the areas that we're going to want to add up. Before we do that, though, let's just make a little estimate about how much of the area of the whole thing is that. The answer is, it's about a quarter. And so when we get our answer, it should be around one-fourth. So let's begin. We're going to find the areas. Let's look at that one. Well, the width of that is one-eighth. And the height is one half. So the area is one half times one eighth, or one sixteenth. We look at the middle one, the width and the height, that's a square. Width and the height are both three eighths. So the area is nine sixty fourths. Don't be afraid, they're good fractions. And then this last one is just going to be exactly the same as the first one, because it's the same shape, even though it's rotated, it's also one sixteenth. So then all we have to do is add them up. So we got the probability that sum is 4 is 1 16th plus 9 64th plus 1 16th. We look around for a common denominator because we're adding fractions. 16 times 4 is 64, so we're going to add, multiply top and bottom by 4 in the 16th. So we get 4 64th plus 9 64th plus 4 64th is 17 64th. 8 plus 9, 17. 17 64th, which is about 0 0.27, which as advertised, was a little bit more than a quarter, very close to a quarter. So that's the probability of rolling a four. What's your takeaway from this? Should be that the area model works, even if things are not equally likely. But why bother actually doing the areas? You could just do a calculation. Turns out, if you do the area model, it helps give you intuition about how big various probabilities are. For example, looking at this diagram, you might wonder, well, what's the most likely sum to come up? 
and you look at it, it's pretty clear that the most likely thing to happen is to get a sum of three. That make any sense? I sure hope so. See you around.